You're listening to the We Are Libertarians Network. Learn more at wearelibertarians.com. Welcome to the Boss Hog Liberty Podcast on the We Are Libertarians Network. I'm your host, Jeremiah Morrill, and as always, I'm joined by our co-host, Mr. Dakota Davis. What is up, Jeremiah? Man, we are, uh, we're in episode 74. 74, one away from 75. This is the third to last episode in the guest bedroom studio. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's still awesome, though. It's, it's like, it's yeah. so slick in this in this very fairly small space. Uh, it's yeah. it looks so much bigger on television. It does. It does. Yeah, people watch and then they come in here and they go, "Oh dear god." This yeah. was if this was my bedroom, I'd complain it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you live the Fisher's lifestyle. Yeah, well, <laughs> I mean, they yeah. they haven't this is the size of a closet in your neighborhood, I'm sure. Oh uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, Brett Bittner is watching. Yes, that is Steve Horwitz. That's his voice. You guys remember him probably 30 episodes or so ago. Yeah, Steve was Steve ago. was on the show. Steve was uh, first on on episode 45. So Man. almost exactly third time. Yeah, there we go. Uh, I've got to finish the read. Our show is about our lives in rural Indiana. It's a show about folks who are involved in politics, and we promise that our episodes are going to be a fun and an easy listen. We interview people who are influencers, elected officials, political experts, and folks we just find interesting. The uh, the interesting guy, I suppose, would be Chase Payton over on my left on the right of the sh- camera. Hi, hey, Chase. What's up, man? <laughs> <laughs> you doing all right? Yeah, I'm okay. Yeah. We, uh, we once again, uh, the fourth chair is a backup plan. We uh, we were hoping to have Chris Galt, uh, the the OG We Are Libertarians co-host, and uh, we had to make a flying lead change. We say in the horse business, a flying lead change, switching from uh, Thursday to Wednesday. It, it tossed out Galt on us, so uh, we got Chase, who's always down to party. I'm the backup. I don't have a life, so it works out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Do you know you know who Wally Pip was? You know, I don't. Wally, Wally Pip was oh, the guy the who baseball play, guy, baseball yeah. player that Lou that that Lou Gehrig replaced when he began his yeah. Iron Man streak, right? So you know, there we go. You're, you're Lou Gehrig. That's right. Sweet. Chris Even is, I Chris knew that. Wally Chase. Pip. Yeah. You got no, Wally Pip. I was going to say Wally Pip. That's right. <laughs> so uh, yeah, so we were going to have Galt on, and the uh, one of the topics we had to we're going to talk about today with Steve. Uh, this is a teaser. Uh, is we're going to talk about this notion of buying local versus buying at the big chains like Amazon or Walmart or somewhere and trying to decide, are you supposed to support the mom-and-pop shop or are you supposed to go to the big-timers? I do love Walmart. All right. I love Walmart. So there was this there was this argument we got into. Galt is uh, incredible, and if you're a, we're a Libertarians listener, you know that he can argue to the wall for no particular reason. And uh, it, <laughs> you just described every libertarian I know. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, and God, we love him. But he he has this. He had this ability to just to just be irritating as hell. And I'm like, uh, also but, every libertarian yeah. I know. <laughs> so we're going to teach you a lesson, Chris, and we're going to have a show. And we're going to bring in Steve, the Ball State economics professor, and he's going to explain. We didn't even know what your opinion was going to be on this, right? But we digging in, we're like, Steve's going to explain to you why you're wrong, and you're going to sit there and defend it. And uh, and now here he's not here. <laughs> Did you hear that? Did you hear that little noise that Steve made? Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right. My favorite kind of argument when the opponent doesn't show. So. <laughs> Victory! <laughs> oh, so uh, I, I guess at this point we're probably supposed to talk about the show a little bit, uh, Dakota. Patreon, we got uh, people oh, in there yeah. helping us out. Of course we have the Patreon plug that we – if uh, just a big thank you always to the people who support us on Patreon – uh, if you want to get in on that club, you get all kinds of bonus content. You get a, uh, I'll send you some stickers and refrigerator magnets and maybe a poster in the mail. Um, yeah, you get all kinds of of, of goodies and uh, and uh, really really quality really quality bonus content. I think first rate. Yeah, first and, rate. Uh, so thank you, of course, to everybody who who uh, donates monthly because that is uh, what keeps the show going. We, you know, that's what pays the pays the bills and what's going to keep the lights on in the new studio um and of course we are looking uh 
at other options to fund ourselves. So if you're a small business owner uh, or a big business owner, then you can uh, contact us and uh, we will get you set up with all kinds of uh, opportunities. So there's a survey, uh, Dear Leader, Chris Bangle provides for us as always. And uh, we're, as, as We're Libertarians is looking at uh, commercialization opportunities, we're included as well. There's a survey and we've been getting information and feedback back from the fans. So we, yes, we, we talked about that a little bit last week and we got some reports and some information. Uh, real quickly, what do we know about the people? What do they like? What do they hate? What's the what's the problem with this well, show? I can tell you one thing. The reading uh, of the complaints. The biggest thing that I think that I, I learned from this is that no one cares about the quality of the website. Nobody gives a damn. No. Nobody we have a nobody cares at all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody, no, nobody, uh, nobody cares about what the what the website's like as long as they can uh, click on the link and get to the audio. That's all they care about. Uh, but we had some really good likes and we got a ton of feedback. It's very, very uh, honored that the people took the time to do this because it was not a short survey. No, in the least. No, I took it for We're Libertarians, and I'm a I'm a cast member, and I thought, oh my god, I'm going to quit twenty percent through. I did one. Yeah. Did you? Did you? Mm-hmm. Hmm. I think that we know which dislike he had. <laughs> Need more chase? No, and it was the uh, uh, was it the one where uh, someone said that Jeremiah and Dakota need to make out. That might have been me. <laughs> <laughs> and then I said uh, that we needed more booze. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. you're drinking right here. I was gonna say That's you him. guys are well stocked. Yeah, I don't we. Know what the problem there is we uh, we give extra credit to uh, politicians who come on the show and have a drink. One of the uh, one of the dislikes was the name. Someone doesn't like the name. That was probably me. That was because, uh, and it says, thanks, Chris Spangle. Mm. Was it, so was that you? Uh, no, I don't, actually, I didn't answer the survey on around that. Felt, yeah. That felt like it would be wrong. It did seem weird. Yeah. Um, you know, someone disliked uh, windmills. I will vote for myself in November, though. Someone says, dislikes windmills. So they just don't like windmills, apparently, uh, all around. I can't imagine that being a divisive <laughs> issue. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, so, Yeah. Uh, some of these were were uh, really good feedback. One of the uh, one of the biggest things that we that we heard was uh, the number one dislike was nothing. So we have no, there's nothing wrong with this. Chris Spangle hey. says the name is not changing, or he will cancel the show. <laughs> and he turned his boomer button on. It's all in caps, so he's very Ooh. serious about it. Ooh, very serious about it. Uh, and that boomer button, I had not heard that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just want to point out, my 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 daughter probably will never listen to this, but but I get I get all caps from her all the time, and she's twenty two, but she thinks it's funny. She's being ironic. Yes, it, yes. yeah. There were uh, there boomer, were protesters. Boomer button. God, yeah. I just all right. I can leave now. I learned my phone. <laughs> <laughs> we uh, we're the cutting edge yes, uh, yes. over here. There's no doubt. Yeah. Urban Dictionary has nothing on you guys. <laughs> They were uh, they were protesting on Main St- on Broad Street, Broad and Main today outside the County Courthouse over wind or air today. Uh, people uh, holding signs yelling I at the air. I passed that on the way home. Did you, did you honk? I did. It looked like a walking graveyard. Oh God! <laughs> Just um, old, old man yelling yeah, okay. at clouds, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so so this goes into uh, one of the complaints that we had about Chase. Yeah. It was actually, you the had only... your own bucket of complaints. Yeah. It... Yes. <laughs> <laughs> one of it was. Uh, uh, you demean the concerns of possible li- listeners. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry. <laughs> uh, you you pulling on the uh, Canadian accent? Yeah, I, see, yeah, I, I was going to say that's a uh, flashback to uh, episode forty-five with Steve Horwitz. Whenever we talked about the great Canadian Jordan Peterson. Oh, we did. That's right. Yeah, the YouTube commenters weren't crazy about that. No, I can well, tell you that. Yeah, we got we got a lot of downvotes no, on our on our No, over yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, no lobster man tonight. He yeah. cost us so much. The mob came after us. They uh, they claimed that uh, I apparently hate Jordan Peterson, even though I spent money to go see him live. Uh, <laughs> Well, we all waste money on stuff. Mm. Yeah, that's right. I accidentally paid for an extra hotel room in Florida that I didn't stay in because I forgot to cancel it. So, <laughs> you know, we all make mistakes. Uh, Sarah doesn't know that yet. Hi, Sarah. I made a mistake back uh, on the honeymoon. We we paid for a hotel room at the uh, the Intercontinental at Doral, but we didn't stay there. Um, <laughs> Demean listens. Demean listeners more, Chase. This is what made Abdul Hakim Shabazz. Spangle says that. <laughs> so, just pick on him. You'll be fine. Yeah, there you go. You got it. You have your own crazy Larry out there. Chase, uh, Dakota and I hang, hung out uh what was it? Monday night. Last night. Monday night football. Two nights ago. That's right. How, what, how was Andrew? Andrew looked terrible. He threw yeah. an interception, and uh, it wasn't good. Uh, Dakota got to experience pro football in person, nice. and he explained I it have to his bride. I have multiple <laughs> <laughs> pro football games. I just I, – I like watching them live. I just don't really get it. I don't really care about, like, oh, the player's doing this. I, uh, so you're not going to be in a fantasy league this year? No. 
Did no. you take a knee during the national anthem? I did, yeah. yeah. Everybody, yeah. I got booed personally. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I was told to get out. Love it or get out. Uh-huh. Yeah. That was fun. I mean, it was the stadium was half full, but uh, I mean, your, your tax dollars pay for it, so at least you got to go in there and check it out. <laughs> That's right. You pay an extra 1% in the food my, and beverage. My favorite thing about going to Colts games or to Lucas Oil Stadium in general is seeing the beautiful construction of that place. It's amazing. It is, I don't, that roof cost an extra $100 million. Did it? Yeah. Wow. That yeah. is incredible. I they're, just, they're too wimpy to play outside. <laughs> are, are there any uh, current pro football teams that exclusively play outdoors? Chicago Bears. <laughs> and the Green Bay he, Packers. He, yeah, he's, yeah he no, no I'm not idea. even going there. I have there. no idea. That's I don't too. know. Dakota has that absolutely no on, idea. Like, that was an honest question. 85% no. of the NFL plays outside. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Exclusively? Cincinnati, well, Nashville. Exclusively. I mean, I mean if they're their home on, field. Yeah, their home field is, is outside. The only oh, okay. domes that are left are Houston, Indianapolis, Detroit, Detroit. Um, Atlanta. Atlanta just built another new yeah. one, I guess. St. Louis is gone. They don't have it. Minnesota built a new one. Right, right. So, and I think that's it. So yeah, five even, or six. even Green Bay, right? Yeah, Green Atlanta Bay outside. outside. Yeah. 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 Seattle used to have a dome. They got rid of it. Yeah. Um, the Rams were a dome team, and then they moved to Los Angeles, yeah. so they're outside. I don't know what the uh, what the new stadium is going to be in uh, in in Los Angeles. Yeah. Or uh, Las Vegas, rather. Yeah. So anyway, uh, breaking news: the uh, county commissioners have passed the wind ordinance. So if you're uh, if you're watching this and weren't paying attention, they did pass the wind ordinance. So uh, hmm. uh, surprise! There you go. <laughs> yeah. If you, if you didn't read the paper, now that one was coming. Um, you uh, you probably should have read it again. One of the uh, one of the big things that I noticed during the Colts game, as I, I was I was sitting there watching it, were the amount of flags that were thrown for uh, what seemed like minor things. Now, I've said it before, and I'll say it again during this episode, that I think that we should force our pro football players to take steroids. <laughs> and then uh, before the game, two days before the game, we don't allow it. So then they get rage yeah. and just go out there. That would be I, awesome. That, would, that is real entertainment. That would, that's like 300 Stuff but, yeah, with the gladiators. This, I, this I wrote a, Indianapolis. <laughs> I, two things about about this. I, I did a uh, program for the Institute for Pain Studies, Learn Liberty, using uh, football and fantasy football to teach basic economic principles. Mm. So that you can, I think that's available online. Still, I'll look maybe after, and you can you can see you can link it up. But I also wrote an op-ed. I think it was in the Dallas Morning News, arguing half seriously, right, that if you really want to take the injuries out of football, take away the helmets. Yeah. Right. Yeah. There because, we go. Yeah. I, mean, I like it's, that. Yeah, it's the same thing. You know, it's this. It's the Peltzman effect we call it in economics. After the guy talked about seatbelts, the same way. You wear a seatbelt, you drive more dangerously. Right. Cause yeah. more accidents. Yeah. So, so if you could right. go back to rugby, right, and uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. We always yeah. joke about NFL or uh, race car drivers. They when they get out of the car, if they're going to throw punches, they leave their helmets on. Right. Right. right, right. They don't. They don't fight. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Fight out there uh, mm-hmm. without them on. Uh, so let's let's talk about Steve a little bit. Uh, background for those that don't remember from episode forty-five, you. Uh, you are the most heavily educated guest we've ever had. <laughs> uh, uh, you have you have an MA, which is a Master of the Arts. I don't know. Right. Yep. Uh, and then a PhD, which means uh, you're Doctor Steve Horwitz. Yeah. PhD uh, piled high and deep, right? Yes. Uh, <laughs> e- economics from George Mason University. Of course, we all know them from the uh, the NCAA chase uh, from from basketball. They uh, they do well sometimes over in Virginia, uh, named after the. Uh, I, I, I suppose he was on the revolutionary side. And then uh, Steve was a professor of economics at St. Lawrence University in St. Lawrence County, my homeland originally in New York State. And uh, you became the associate dean of first year. Is mm-hmm. that is that written right, J- yes. Dakota? Or is, yes. yes, that's written correctly. That's, that's real. It's not that he became the first dean, associate dean in his first year, but no. it's the of the first year of the first year. year. The first year. That's correct. And now he is uh, at Chirp Chirp <laughs> University. Uh, he is now. Formerly known as the John H. Schottner <laughs> Distinguished Professor of Free Enterprise at Ball State. Uh, <clears throat> your school was in the news recently. So as you Slightly. said, <laughs> you are now the Meat Lovers Distinguished <laughs> Professor of Free Enterprise That's at Ball State That's what I wanted. University. I wanted it all along. I wanted to be the Meat Lovers. I get, I, we were just talking today about what will happen. I mean, I, eventually I'll get a new name to go with my Distinguished Professor. But, but you know, there was there was a – when I knew it was going to be Schnatter a couple of years ago, whatever, I got the job. I said, look – Meat lovers with the double cheese, distinguished for <laughs> right? something like that. Right? Just no pineapple. Cause no, yeah. wrong, like, pineapple and pizza is wrong. Yeah, it's wrong. Yeah. It's evil. Yeah. I love pineapple. And pizza. Yeah, of course you do. Do you really? <laughs> uh, occasionally. Not, it's not like my, my, my main pizza, but Oof. every now and again. Mm. Mm. 
So interesting. It, it, there was a vote last week, and this this, is, this has been a a bit of a story. Uh, Indiana uh, Ball State University is a is a state school in the state of Indiana. So there's a board of trustees, and some of them are politically appointed. Uh, so there was a, an original vote uh, to not make any changes after some statements were made by uh, by Papa John himself. And uh, the Indianapolis Colts and Ball State University chose to keep their association. And then I don't I didn't follow the inner politics of it, but there was a second. It was brought up a second time before last the board Thursday, of trustees yeah. this last week. Mm-hmm. And uh, so they voted, I think, eight to one. And uh, the one no vote was a was a Ball State graduate. Uh, who was an appointee from uh, Milroy, Indiana, um, Jean Ann Harcourt, who's a longtime uh, Republican volunteer, uh, has been big in Rush County politics for years and years and years and runs uh, Harcourt Industries. She was appointed by the governor at the time, who was Pence. Governor Pence, yep. who's now the vice president. So <clears throat> it, as always, these political things just kind of yep. dri- dribble up. So there's an angle that now this is all the vice president's fault. That his person voted no. Uh, I haven't heard that one. That's good. <laughs> Everything's his fault. Well, yeah. So, I mean, you want to talk about this now? We can talk about this. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah, we'll yeah. Get into it. I mean, I, so yeah, the board reversed themselves, and I'm, and it wasn't a surprise really. Uh, after they, they were so there's four schools that had Schneider centers, right? Louisville, University of Kentucky, Purdue, where it was brand new, like March, brand new, and and us. Uh, the two Kentucky schools immediately de-schnoddered, as I like to call it, dissociated with him uh, right away after after he made his comments uh, or used the word that we're not allowed to use, uh, that you're not supposed to use. And uh, they did right away. Purdue and Ball State didn't respond right away. And on the same day, Ball State said, we're sticking with him. Purdue said no. So it left Ball State as the only school who was sticking with him. That's a tough place to be. He's an alum, understandable. But the reaction was so strong, I think. Uh, both from alums in terms of saying, we're not giving you any more money, this is the wrong decision. And also on campus, too, the Black Student Association wrote a, a very, I thought, very well done and and, and sort of thoughtful response to it uh, about why this was a problem and, and what could be done about it. Uh, other student groups were upset, and I think, I suspect uh, that the president all along thought the board made the wrong decision. I think the president would have liked the board to have gone with the other schools, but the board didn't. Uh, and I think the, 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 just the, the fact that they were sticking with Schnatter meant that anything having to do with diversity or race on campus just wasn't going to go anywhere productive because all of those groups were just going to keep bringing up Schnatter. And I think the president recognized that. I suspect what happened is that the president put some very heavy pressure on the board to say, I, I, I can't do my job. I can't do the things that I was you know, hired to do unless, you know, with, with, with that name still hanging there. So they reverse themselves. Um, why? Why do you think that they they uh, made the decision to keep it at first? That, I, I suspect that this is, goes to Jeremiah's point. I suspect that the board uh, is heavily you know, it is heavily Republican. I suspect they wanted to resist the sort of perception of you know political correctness and blah blah blah. I, and I do think there were some sincere, also people sincerely thought he apologized and that that you know uh, they could make it right and that he wanted to do right by Ball State. I think Schnatter, by the way, uh, could have. I don't know if it would have saved the situation, but were I him, the moment that the board agreed to keep him, what I would have done is say, okay, what can I do to forward? Issues of diversity and inclusion on campus. For example, Ball State's building a new $4 million multicultural center. Not quite. $4 million isn't under the couch for Papa John, but, but $4 million is not a big deal. He could have said, I'll pay for half of it, right? I'll pay right. for all of it. The, the black students asked for more stuff on, on, on minority entrepreneurship, which, by the way, the Schneider Institute has done and will keep doing. But even without, even beyond that, Schneider could have said, I'm going to come to campus and do some programs for students of color. I mean, there's things he could have done, right, immediately to say, look, I'm genuinely sorry. I, you know, it, it, you misunderstood the context of what I said, whatever. Right? But he didn't do any of that. And I think in the absence of that, it was, it was pretty it was easy a, to move. Yeah, it was still in, in poor taste. Yeah. It, didn't, it didn't fix anything. And they, yeah. they knew that the battle was going to keep Raging. Yep. And uh, th- one one important note that I think that I wanted to make during this was they didn't just drop the name; they yep. also returned the donation. Yep. yep. So, so yeah. So a couple things. Uh, this is where it gets uh, interesting and tricky. Uh, so yes, they ter- returned his money. Um, it turns out that the money. No, they returned his money. Well, they did, they took the name off, including off of my 
because <laughs> off my job. <laughs> right? Which I'll note, by the way, I found out by watching the live stream at the Muncie web paper website. Right, no one called me to say we're going to do this, so I didn't. And I heard this the same. Well, it would have been world. collusion if they. It would have been corrupt if they had told you ahead of time. <laughs> because they, yeah. we can't. But, we but can't do that. It's a public aside. meeting. Put that aside. Yeah. Uh, the so so the good the good news here is that uh, the funds that support the work that I'm doing in the economics department with, and with my colleague Todd Nesbitt come directly from the Koch Foundation. They, they were not Schnatter's – was not Schnatter's money. So the fact that he's getting he, – that the university is returning his money affects my work absolutely not at all um, and my salary and research money and all that stuff. Is, your your is, work is still safe. It's just that you – now they can, they, can sell, they can sell you to the highest bidder. Right. <laughs> well, right. So right. So I, I, got, I got no name on my, on my chair now, right? I go find someone to, to fund it, right, and get their name on it. If you want, the Jeremiah Morrell, you know, you can hey, – hey, uh, yeah, the uh, Boss Hog Liberty Distinguished there Professor. There you go. There you go. <laughs> Albert Todd. That's also, I mean, I wanted the F.A. Hayek Professor, but the Boss, boss Hog Liberty. Uh, we we, we don't, don't have the millions that, yeah. that uh, uh, Schnarr did, but yeah, whatever. So, but, but so the good news is, is well, that, that all that stuff John, is going to – John Wayne used to say he used to work for $20 a day and he used to work for $5 a day. Yeah. And if, if there's not a $20 offer, maybe it's $5 to get it. Yeah. Uh, so, well, the good, so it's good, the work will continue that we're doing, so, and, and I suspect it will grow. So, so speaking, while we're on the college topic mm-hmm. and controversies, I'm going to make a little change here in our show note order here because we have a, we have a special guest that we're going to line up, uh, and it's uh, Purdue University. Uh, they got themselves in the news with uh, with their – all the students have gone back to school. John, uh, I, I assume freshmen reported this week or next week at, uh, at Ball State. Uh, we started class on Monday of this week. You're so, already in. Yeah. So uh, we're going to have Mason uh, Mason Routinghouse on, or whatever, however you say his name. Routinghouse. Routinghouse. Yes. Uh, he's a Tri alum, Henry County guy, and he's a first year student at uh, at Purdue. And we will we we're going to play with the sound Hello. here. Hello, Mason. Yeah. We all right, Jeremiah Morrill, Boss Hog of Liberty Show. You are on. You are on live with uh, Jeremiah, Dakota, and Chase, and uh, Steve Horwitz of uh, Ball State University, the professor. And we're just uh, just introducing your segment here, talking about you being a first year student at uh, at Purdue, and you went to something called Gold Rush. Is that right? Yeah, it's called Boiler Gold Rush. It's like a freshman orientation week. Hmm. So, it, what what kind of things happen at this event? Uh, I mean, throughout the week, they just have, like, sessions. You learn about the school. You learn where your classes are. They get you to communicate with new incoming freshmen. And, I mean, it's honestly a great program. So are, are, do, you have to, uh, do you have to go to the, through Gold, Gold Rush? Or, uh, there was Because there were all kinds of different stories going around as the, uh, the presentation uh, is mandatory and some people saying that it was a, a voluntary thing to go to. Oh, absolutely not. Um, what I mean, you as a freshman, you get the choice to come to Boiler Gold Rush. You move in a week early. We moved in um, last Monday. Throughout the week, they had events. You got to, like I said, learn the campus, and not even the things that you that they put on were. Um, they weren't required. You didn't have to go if you didn't want to. So, so they had things lined up. They promoted everything, and you could choose to go if you wanted. So this event that made the news is a portion of that, and I guess it was a it was a comedy act. A guy named Andy Gross who performed. Are you a big uh, stand up comedy guy? You like enjoy that stuff? Oh, absolutely. So, uh, what uh, what was it advertised as, and what did you uh, what did you experience? What was what, what was your it was, was it funny? Exactly. Personally, from my standpoint, if I'm going to have a comedian come on stage, I'm not there to. You know, I'm there to laugh and things. And he was advertised as a comedian, ventriloquist, and uh, a magician. Okay. So. The, the trifecta. <laughs> <laughs> and he is. He is yeah. all three. So in the show, it had and, audience participation, and they they asked, a, I guess, a young lady to come on. Uh, I assume she's a student, one of your cohorts. And she came on stage, yep. and, the, and the bit was she was going to guess a card, and he was going to draw it, and he – as it, there's video of it. I, I saw a portion of it on YouTube, but I don't think I saw the whole thing because I watched it and I thought, man, that can't all be all that had happened or else this would be a nothing yeah, burger. Yeah, exactly. So on the news, if you watch the video, they show you a video and it shows – and even in the articles it says he failed at that trick. And it made him just look like a complete dumbass. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, I mean 
the news just made it look ten times what worse than what it was. And like you said in your little summary, it said our students too thin skinned or is he in the wrong? And personally, he's a Las Vegas performer. You know, he's that means he's in front of adults consistently. He's not with families. He uh he was con contracted as a comedian at this age group. You know, you've got kids at all maturity levels. Um, are are you you're uh, you've been sent to Purdue University? Does that mean that you're considered an adult now? Are you do you, you are you a child <laughs> or an adult, Mason? Absolutely, absolutely. That's um, part, but, but that that um, is the question, right? I mean, that's that's part of what I yeah. think is is at stake here. I mean, well, the, I'll just say the interesting thing to me. You know, this is. First of all, presumably the young woman volunteered to go up on stage, right? Nobody dragged her on so, stage, correct? Wait, so what happened was he went through the crowd. Um, he said, I need a volunteer. He came down on off the stage, and he, like, he walked around the first row, and he told this girl to put her hand up. She put her hand up, and he walked back up on stage, you know, just as a joke, and he goes, oh, I need a volunteer. And then like she was already raising her hand because he told her to put it up. And he goes, oh, you look good. And he came up there. <laughs> So, and she was no, also. I mean, yeah, it was pretty funny when she did yeah, that. Yeah, and this is, as you said, right? This guy's a professional comedian, and this is what you would do yeah. at, a, at a Vegas show or something like that. I've seen, you know, if you've ever been That's to any Vegas, kind of Vegas exactly. show, exactly. And the things now, he's done this act for years, the same act, you know, and it's just what is what's got him as a Vegas headliner, obviously. And it's not even like he did anything awful. Uh, people are, you know, they're pushing it and they're like, oh, he sexually harassed this girl. And it's just, this just isn't what happened. I mean, it, the timing was awful. Let it, it was awful. We had this presentation before it and it was about ah. free zone, which is a way of saying, oh, we accept everybody. We don't uh-huh. discriminate. There's no sexual assault, no sexual harassment, things like this. And the timing was awful. So, okay, they, so oh my gosh! So his agent that is probably had not, going to get screamed at. Yeah, I had not heard that piece of it, which is interesting. And look, those those programs are really good. I used to I used to help run the orientation program at my prior school. So look, stuff like that's really good. But you're right. Certainly in that context, whatever he did is going to look a lot worse than yeah, and and it, per- it, perceived as what, a lot worse. Yeah. Plus. But yeah, what what do you expect from a comedian? Right. I mean, exactly. Had, had exactly. they never listened to this guy before before they signed him? The administrators who oh, did, possibly that's, not. That's the bad part yeah. of Purdue's side because, you know, they have this student orientation committee. They were supposed to, they put this whole thing on. It was a group of like five or six or seven maybe students, and they put this whole thing on over um, supervisors and then team leaders, team leaders at the lowest level being in charge of their groups, supervisors are the, in charge of the team leaders, and, you know, the SOC over everybody. And yeah. – you think they'd look, especially as this big as a, a university period, you think they'd look into a comedian. As soon as I see comedian, red flag, I'm going to look, oh, is it an appropriate comedian? You know, you think they'd look into their background, say, as is appropriate for who we're showing it to. So uh, and, also one other thing, back to Steve's point of maybe they hadn't listened to it. Andy Gross is actually in the middle of a college campus tour. So he's going across the country going to these different orientations. So it's not like he, this was right. the first one. It, he His agent probably set this up and mm-hmm. made the first contact. Yeah. and Absolutely. Yeah. So, right. And the other I, – I, so it's really interesting that it was right after the presentation on sexual assault and all that that makes – that helps explain why the over why the overreaction. But everything I've heard, right? Nobody yeah. touched anybody's genitals. People made oh, he, no, he no. made jokes, yeah. but nobody touched. And no, she wasn't forced in any meaningful sense of the word exactly. forced to do anything. This exactly. is right. So if we think, so the interesting question for me is compare this. I don't know if you guys have followed this case at NYU with the famous feminist philosopher. Who who has been accused of female has been accused of of, of uh, sexually harassing one of her male graduate students. Yeah, I think I saw the yeah, headline. Yeah, across. so right, and but but what's interesting about all of these? Th- what real harassment involves power relationships, right? That's ultimately what it's about, and I just don't see that here. This is a comedian doing an act. He didn't 
do anything, my view, crosses the line. I mean, it's, you know, you can say it was in perhaps poor taste, but that's what comedians do. Comedians fail all the time. Right. That's not, right. And he didn't, I mean, right. right. And in some sense, he didn't fail. If you've this, seen him do the, the trick, this, it, right, this yeah. joke is designed to fail because right, he's, right. Supposed to, he's supposed to get the wrong card. Right. And then the punchline of this thing was, well, at least I got a free feel out of oh, it. Oh, yeah. That's not even the thing, though. He, he, he intentionally made it look like he failed. Yep. He said, oh, at least I got a free feel out of it. That was the punchline of the joke. And then, he finished the trick, yep. and her card popped out of that deck that was drawn onto the paper. Yep. Yeah. So what happened so not, well, after this happened? Was it a thing that went on Twitter and people started working out, or was there immediate booing, or what was the crowd well, reaction at the moment? I, I as soon as like as soon as she came off stage, one of the members of the two of the members of the SOC, the Student Orientation Committee, walked over to her, and I could see up there like because I wasn't so far away, I can see. I saw up there they were talking to her like something was wrong. Then I saw a few of the team supervisors walk out of Elliott Hall of music. And I was like, something's wrong. And I just waited for it and waited for it. And nothing else like that even happened. So we get through, you know, halfway through. He comes out in the audience to do another trick. And um, he's asking for volunteers. And he walks up to a girl and he says, Stand up, and she refused, wouldn't do anything. And he said, fine, be like that, like just messing around. And then she stood up and like tried to rip the microphone from his hand, and he just pulled it away and kept walking and went to another one. Then this girl, he asked another one, and she wouldn't stand up. So at this time, I knew they're protesting whatever his act is going to be. I knew something was wrong, and they've been contacted by um, one of the SOC members, and in the end, I found out they were. So... We were sitting there waiting. He finally got a volunteer because a girl just got up and volunteered. And the trick wasn't even bad. So, you know, it was just a normal magic trick. And he turned like a, a tissue rose into a real rose. And, <laughs> and he went back up on stage. Later on in the show, you know, he was um, cute as, well, labeled as a ventriloquist. At no point in the time did he bring a puppet. He brought one out and it did some, <laughs> I mean, it was good. But he um, had a dog and he blew up a balloon and then made the dog like fly off his hand like, i mean he just threw it off it was done but then he's like man i didn't have a puppet so he got another volunteer and you knew he knew something was up too so there another girl didn't step foot on the stage he started calling guys uh so he gets up there and he goes well there's one condition you know usually when you're a ventriloquist um the dummy sits on the lap you know the ventriloquist lap and it just <laughs> You know, he's sitting there, he's waiting, he doesn't do it, he goes, he starts backing up, and then then he, he makes the, um, he says, back that shit up, that's what he says, so he likes to sit down on him, and you know, it's like, everyone, that's when the majority of the people walked out, they all took offense, people were yelling, dropping the bomb at him, you know, mm -hmm. in the crowd, booing him. And then everyone got off state, well, out of the place, not even everybody. And it said in the news, we were instructed to leave. Not once were we instructed to leave. And it said the music was played over his performance. And not once did that happen. So did he actually call himself the Matt Lauer of magic? Uh, yeah, he did. He did. He did. <laughs> <laughs> it's a joke. Yeah. It's... Yeah. yeah. So what's it been like? Is it is it died down or, are the, or do you have you – have... News crews out there talking to everybody. You obviously get the Boss Hog Liberty, which is a big deal in I, your hometown. I, but... I haven't seen one. Hmm. Um, you know, everybody's talking about it over here. I'm, I'm, I'm just like, in, yeah. in this day, I'm only 19 years old. And, like, it's just like, you know, people always are always worrying about stepping on each other's toes. And that's what that was. I mean, everyone just gets butt hurt anymore. Well, and the and thing is, like, a part of it too, right, is that people have, especially again, coming on the heels of that presentation, sometimes have difficulty recognizing context, right? The, this is not the context yeah. of, say, a boss, you know, go, uh, you know, Harvey Weinstein, right, harassing actresses who he has power over and who he can get. I mean, this is a very, very different context. Even if the even if you think the f the physical behavior was a problem and it's not clear it was, but even if you think it is, right? Again, it's in a really really different context of of someone essentially volunteering to come up on stage and be part of this. You if you get up on stage at a live performance anywhere, you better be prepared that something you know, you're, like you're that gonna, you're going to get embarrassed, right? You're, you're going to get embarrassed. Show. Yeah, yeah, you're part of the show. That's right. And um, it's not it's 
just what you guys have seen and many people have seen in the video. He plays, she places her hand. He doesn't take her hand once, touches her once, yeah. takes her hand and puts it on his leg. Well, she does, or herself. She right. didn't have to. Well, Mason, thank you very much for, for hey, doing Mason, this, man. Hey, Mason, I got a couple questions for you before you leave. <laughs> uh, I have a cousin thinking about going to Purdue. Uh, how good is the food there? <laughs> Well, personally, I just came back from the dining court before you guys called. <laughs> nice. <laughs> what do you have? Um, you know, I, I had a nice, uh, what I have, sloppy joe and some chicken, mm. some cookies, chocolate cake and icing. One uh, out of ten. No, wait a minute. Wait a minute. You, you were an athlete at Tri, were you not? Oh, yeah. That's different here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so apparently <laughs> you're giving up on that dream now and you're just working on the freshman 15 in the first month. <laughs> Yeah, freshman fifteen or freshman yeah. thirty, it depends on yeah. how. What, well, what, well, like we say, is, you know, when the marginal cost of food is zero, right? You're just going to keep going from one to exactly. ten. Exactly. How good is the food? Uh, depends on the dining court. Okay, you got them picked out. You overall, got, you... I'd give this. Overall, I'd give this place seven out of ten on the food. Nice, Ooh, nice. nice. Huh. That that for a college man, yeah, it could right. it could be pretty scary sometimes. Okay. Last question. This is a big one for my cousin. How hot are the women? <laughs> he says after we just do this whole segment. Of I, I, I kind of walked into one on that. I walked in expecting something a little more than what I've been, the card I've been dealt. So, uh, um, <laughs> one, so to, I, one to it's ten. It's probably about a five. It's not. <laughs> if you're looking for a lick, not an education, you might want to go to like IU. Yeah, that's or, where my wife went. And she's very hot. So I would say IU for sure. <laughs> All right. Um, so yeah, they're they're a little different here. I think they're more focused on an education here. <laughs> All right. All thanks, right. Mason. Thank you very much, Mason. Congratulations right. on uh, on on your academic achievements. Uh, you're going to be the uh, the next great pharmacist at a Tri High University. There's a I don't know how it's happened, but there's this pipeline of pharmacists that have tried it to Purdue. <laughs> Uh, and find some time to take some economics. There's really good econ props there. There you go. I am in a microeconomics class right now. I'm actually double majoring. Excellent. And, uh, with um, another major in business management. So. Good. Uh, if people want to follow yep. you, be anything promote Mason. You're on the show. You want to Instagram follows. You got anything? Anything cool? Oh, absolutely. Follow me. My handle's R O T T four four two on uh, Instagram. Then my Twitter's R O T T four four zero two on Twitter. Awesome, man! Thank you for joining us. We appreciate it. It's uh, we're we're proud of you, and uh, we're uh, we're excited to watch uh, watch how things go and spread the worst word about the Boss Hog up in uh, West Lafayette. Oh, absolutely, will do. All right, man. Good talking. All right, thanks. Rex Bell. Uh, Rex Bell's in the chat, and he said he sat behind a bunch of guys waving dildos at the Libertarian National Convention in Orleans. How could he possibly be offended? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I watched some of this guy's act real quick before we move on. I watched some of it on YouTube. I, I like not even just that specific act, just his other stuff that he'd done. Uh, I had a better show in uh, at Zany's in Chicago this weekend than anything he puts on. So I'm thinking that some of the outrage and the walkout is people were just getting tired of it. Well, it, it, that was new information. I had not heard that they'd just gone through sexual harassment training, yeah, and then yeah, you send, really then you send this, this guy out there, so they're all like, ah, see something, say yeah, something, right, and here right. it is. Yeah, no, I think that's, I think that's exactly and the, right. And the poor guy was set up to fail. Right, I understand. Yeah. I mean, understandable in one sense, even if it's part of this whole – we've seen all these other comedians say how they won't play college campuses anymore for just this sort of reason. But, yeah, this, this to do that, to have him do that act right after that presentation – not surprisingly, they're gonna they're gonna read the the, the thing differently than you. Might you have to wonder if that didn't cross his mind beforehand. Like, yeah. maybe I should. You also have to know whether he even knew the schedule, right? Oh yeah, you know that's if he true. Even knew that, right? So that's uh, yeah. you parachute in and you yeah, yeah right exactly yeah, yeah. You, you don't know what you're getting into. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he's, he's like you said, he's on the road doing all these shows. You just pop in, do your show, pop out, right? What do you know? But yeah, yeah. so. It, so, yeah. it, it's been this theme and it between between the Papa John story and and then this thing at Purdue and now Bob Lamy, the you know, the guy who's been the voice of the Indianapolis Colts for thirty two of the thirty five years he's been in Indiana. Mm. Uh and he used a word apparently that's uh, that's been reported in that media st- the it's being it's it's percolating out and, and you're getting different reports and getting the full story. Um it is a very it, it's a time of change. Yeah. And it, the language that you're allowed to use and the things you say and the settings you say them in, um, it's it's 
we are very reactionary as a society. Yeah, we, yeah, and sometimes with justification, right? I mean, you know, you can't do, you can't say the word Schnatter said, even in a context where you're not calling someone that, and expect to not have consequences. You just can't. The word, the word is too toxic. You know, other kinds of things like like the produce thing we're, we're talking about here, right? Are are more complicated. Uh, but you know, even there, and understandably, in some sense, in the world of Me Too. You can see why people would overreact. Uh, I mean, I think this sounds to me like it was an overreaction, but you can understand it. And and it's that, you know, the pendulum will start to swing back, I think, at some point. We'll hopefully get to a more reasonable place. But the danger, of course, is that one of the dangers of making big deals out of nothing is that then everything starts to be nothing. And we don't want to be there either, right? I mean, we really do want to put the Harvey Weinsteins in jail. We want that to happen, right? But if everyone starts believing, oh, it's all, you know, politically correct left-wing nonsense, right? That's not good either. So I think it's it's important for us to be careful and look at the details like we've just been having that conversation and figure out exactly what's going on. We will continue this conversation. We'll uh, we'll, we'll announce now that next Thursday, uh, we're going to have a stand-up comedian on the show, yeah. uh, magically. Uh, it, this is literally the way it worked out. We plan our stuff months in advance, it seems like. But uh, Chris Bowers, uh, the stand-up comic who owned Morty's Comedy Club, and you've heard him on Bob and Tom, Bowers is going to be joining us uh, Thursday next week. So uh, that'll be a really interesting yeah. conversation to hear, you know, what's the culture like yeah. in stand-up comedy yeah. and what you can say and what you can get away mm-hmm. with. And, you know, he, he had a club and operated it moderately <laughs> successfully uh, for a few years, and it's it's gone now. And um, yeah, there's, Tragically. There, yeah, I love – we loved Morty's. Uh, we really enjoyed going to Morty's. So uh, – but we're going to talk to Bowers and, and talk about what stand-up comedy has in the future and, and what you're allowed to do and – and this dance you do with language, because that's a part of the yeah. act or the skill in comedy, is you go to listen to those shows to p- dance on the edge and to have have some fun. And man, it could be a career ender. Yep, it's yeah. just, it's it's knowing where the edge is is the problem. My my daughter is a is a comedy writer and performer, uh, and and I know that that you know as a woman in particular, right? You're you're struggling with that. You're struggling with try to make your way in what's still a male dominated profession. So yeah, it's it's uh, it's a challenge. Yeah, absolutely. All right, so now let's, we're let's ready get for into the, the main topic. The main filet. The meat. Are you going to upset any of the vegans that listen to the show? We, we go that way. It's all right. <laughs> Protest me. I dare you. As long as it's locally sourced, <laughs> right, organic, grass-fed right. Kogar beef. I don't think Kogar beef is grass-fed. They eat in the field. Uh, they have some grain, too, but they eat grass. All right, well, but they're not Not 100%. exclusively. So we had Does this conversation. We talked about this a minute ago. We kind of teased it. Uh, Chris Galt was going to be here, and then and we accidentally got Chase instead. Thank you, Chase. My bad. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, we Are Libertarians just printed some T-shirts up about a month ago. And we, Chris Spangle did the same thing that we've done on this show where we have a special event. We have some T-shirts uh, that are available for purchase, limited run. You order your shirts, and then they get direct shipped to you, 20 25 bucks a piece. The show gets a cut. We do well. You guys get your merchandise. Everybody's happy. Those are done through some .com website. Uh, Galt said, you are a terrible person. You should have found a local supplier and ordered 200 T-shirts or 300 T-shirts and paid for the T-shirts and mailed them out and shipped them, and you would have made more money, and you would have supported supported a local local. business. That was his biggest thing was you – uh, supporting the local business owners because somehow, Steve, in our society, there's this entrenched idea that if you if you buy from Walmart or from Amazon instead of buying at your local uh, boutique or whatever, somehow you are not you do not have the moral high ground yep. uh, comparatively to the other people, and so that's a, that was the whole argument that we started having with Galt, and it was like. And the crazy thing was is that one of the other co-hosts on We Are Libertarians works, works there. Yeah, works, <laughs> works for, for the, the company. Dot com. Yeah. But it doesn't matter because it's not a locally owned business. And we hear people say that all the time. We, we, it, yeah. This is a little bit of a sidetrack, but it's – we don't want these global corporations coming into yep. our community, right? Uh, you know, But Boar's Head has hundreds of jobs in our yep. town. Uh, but they're not owned here. Their headquarters isn't here. One, one Walmart Supercenter, 400 to 500 jobs. So yes. What's what should be happening? How should we be looking at this, Steve? Well, um, I, d- I noticed I was looking at the show notes. Um, you, I wrote a piece on this a while back for for fee somewhere. I'll, I'll dig it up for you guys. But but I th- okay. So a couple of things to think about. Um, when there's the, 
I think the problem with this is people want to grab the moral high ground for buy for shop locally. And what I would say in response, you don't get the high ground. It's not that it's wrong to shop locally or that it's automatically better to buy from Amazon or Walmart or whatever. There's trade-offs all over the place. I just think it, to say one is clearly better or more morally right than the other, that's the problem. So just as a couple of kind of responses to the usual arguments you hear um, – the, the, the claim that it's more environmentally responsible to buy locally, consider a couple of things. If you go to Walmart or Target, you can buy everything in one trip, right? That's the cool part. You go to Costco, you get a living room set and a bunch of salmon, right? I mean, it's okay. <laughs> you, you, and you make and one the, trip. And the grill to cook it on. And the grill to cook it on. <laughs> and you make one trip in your instead of multiple trips, right, to all kinds of different places all over the place. Even if you order from Amazon, you order multiple things, it comes in one – but those white Amazon vans shows up at your door, right? So, so there's plenty of, of environmental savings that way. And it's not like, you know, the, the giant truck that it's being shipped from wherever, right, is not – the fact that there's one more package on it doesn't make that much of a difference. Yeah. In fact, there's some studies that show it's even cheaper to, to send stuff long distance. There's, there's food miles studies that look, look at this too. So, so that, that's not – that I think is not really – the environmental argument is not going to fly. Um, I think the other thing to think about is – it's usually the case that the WalMarts and Amazons are cheaper, and if you're if you're buying something, but that, now the, the, there was a, there's a group that's going to jump in immediately and say they're cheaper because it's on the back of the labor that they pay low labor and they beat well, up on their okay, suppliers. Come back to that in a minute, but but assuming for the moment it's cheaper, right? That's that savings that people that local people have that they can now have more money to spend also on other local stuff. Years ago, when I was living in New York State, you'll. You'll recognize this story right away. Uh, I was living in Canton, and they were going to build a, a, a Walmart a super center up in Potsdam. And so I, I was asked by the local Republican committee or whatever to, to be on a panel presentation to defend Walmart, which I was happy to do. And uh, the it was great, by the way. The crowd was about three to one pro Walmart, right? Um, and the, my favorite moment was the, the one of the women on the anti-Walmart side was a local preacher, uh, and and you know she got up and said how she can, how she tells her parishioners all the time right that they should keep you know con- small footprint consume you know little and locally and and and, and it, and be anti consumer and all that so I, I got up at my next turn I said I said look that's great and you're welcome to tell your parishioners that but the moment you try to put that into law I have real First Amendment concerns here right. And the audience loved that, right? I came home. I told my – now my ex-wife. I said, well, if the house gets hit by lightning, now you know why because I <laughs> had to take down the preacher woman tonight. Yeah, so uh, I so, found but, your article yeah, actually yeah. On, on Fee, and it is titled uh, Economic Localism is No Better Than Economic Nationalism. Yeah, yeah. And the thing – okay, so I started reading the first paragraph. Okay, listener, the thing that I love most about reading Steve's work is his wonderful vocabulary. And I I love your use of language. And uh, uh, so, like, the first sentence is, as Black Friday has continued to expand in recent years, one response to its orgy of discounts and deals has been to promote the following day. Yeah, so yeah. I I love that. Right. Well, that's, thanks. Uh, I, so, so I think – and I think that's so, – so for me, that's, that's the that's – the part of the issue here is, is that these – like Walmart and all these – the big box stores. Amazon's a little more complicated. But they offer opportunities, both work opportunities, and in small towns like you, you know, in St. Lawrence County, right? One of the one woman got up at this presentation. I have two two teenagers got up and said, "We need jobs, right?" But one woman got up, and she says, she kind of says, "Look at me. I can't go into the boutique stores in Potsdam or Canton and find anything that fits me. The only place I can go to find stuff that fits me is Walmart." Right, and then other people. Some one woman said, "said I don't want to have to drive 25 miles to Ogdensburg to get diapers when I could be able to get them here, you know, five minutes away." So, so St. Lawrence County, New York, yeah. is probably it is one of the if it is the largest county in the state of geographically, New York, yeah. But and it's one of the smallest populations. So it's if you picture our area, it's it's basically like a. A nine county area in Indiana with lots of small towns and hamlets, and it's also fairly poor. It's it's in the I mean, bottom twenty five percent income wise. And so you know these folks are saying, hey, we need jobs, we need cheap, we need cheaper goods, right? And this was t- maybe what ten years ago. Not as many people had internet access, and Amazon wasn't quite Amazon yet. And so the idea of you know, it was easy for the wealthier people to say, oh, we don't want Walmart because it'll spoil you know the pristine countryside when they. 
had internet connections, could shop that way, or they traveled a lot. Like they, you know, I was my family's in Detroit, so we would go to Detroit every once in a while. We'd get some stuff that we couldn't find locally. But if you don't have those if financially, you don't have those opportunities. Having a place like Walmart, right, is is great. So and. The other thing to remember about these – it's not like the people they hire drive in from 500 miles away. These are your friends and neighbors they're right. hiring. They yeah. are local businesses. That, that's the part we – that's 450 jobs that are going to people in your community. I'm going to stay with Walmart because I know Walmart the best. They also give back, right? They sponsor all kinds of you know little league baseball teams and all kinds of stuff like that. They're really involved in the community. So sort of to argue somehow that the only people making money out of this – Right, are sort of far off whomever's. Also remember, who owns Walmart stock? Lots of institutional investors. That's your retirement program, right? So, mm-hmm. so again, the, the, the notion that somehow these organizations, you know, the Walmarts and the Amazons, are, don't have a local component to them. Oh, and I know the one other thing I want to say, back to Jeremiah's point from earlier. Okay, so Walmart a few years ago came out in support of raising the minimum wage. Now, why would Walmart do that? It's relevant to this sort of, they, you know, they, they, they don't pay their workers enough. The reason is that Walmart pays their workers more than the mom and pop stores do, right? And so they, they want to raise the minimum wage because it'll hammer the mom and pop stores. So one of the things to keep in mind here, you know, if you want to argue, well, Walmart keeps their prices low because they don't pay their workers very much. Actually, they pay more than the mom and pop stores do. That's why they want to see the minimum wage go up. So, you know, and, and again, if you're living in these towns, as I did for 27 years, right, finding employment opportunities for young people is really tough. When you get Walmart in there, suddenly you got something. Well, and the consumer, the consumer benefits from having the store there. Yeah. Uh, Rushville, the next city south of us here, about 20 miles south of Newcastle, where our studios are, uh, they had a small they – they didn't have one of the Supercenter Walmarts. They had a small Walmart, and it closed last, earlier this year. Now the people of the city are disappointed and mad that the products they would buy at Walmart they can't get, so they have to drive to Newcastle or Greensburg to go, or to Shelbyville to get those products. Yep, yep. So, yeah. So whenever I was writing the show notes, um, I, I gave us a list of all of the of the top arguments that, that came from a paper that uh, uh, that is titled uh, Indie Impact Study Series, a national comparative survey with the American Booksellers Association on. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. So th- this is where it's all come from. My favorite point that they made was point number two. Uh, in in this paper, which is you conserve your tax dollars, and the argument that they made was somewhere along the line of shopping in a local business you shop, district. You save your tax dollars. Yeah, it says that if you shop local, then you're not driving as far, so therefore less wear and tear. Yeah, less yeah. wear and tear on the infrastructure. And I thought, how ridiculous is that? Do you know how much how much money in taxes? The Walmart down the road is paying. Right. <laughs> and, again, go back to the Amazon argument. All right, you want to be more efficient use of the roadways, put everything in one truck instead of 40 people taking their own uh, cars. Steve, that's right. not yeah. even going to be an issue in 10 years. We're just yeah. going to have drones doing right. it. Well, that's there. even better, <laughs> right? Even better. Yeah, so, I mean, yeah. I, I, look, all of this said, this doesn't mean it's a bad idea to shop locally, right? It's perfectly fine. In fact, I'll just I'll tell you a quick story up in Fishers, right? Um, when we moved up there, I was looking for, you know, to Hardware store type stuff. And one of the interesting things about where we are, we're like on 116th, uh, 131st in Allisonville. Um, there's no Lowe's or Home Depot that's really close, right? It's 15 minutes to the nearest one, which is not so terrible, right? But it's not like around the corner. And so I was kind of – I thought this is weird. Then I realized there's a small little do-it center on Allisonville Road and 116th. Yep. Five minutes away. You know Local hardware about? shop. Yeah, 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 yeah. Five minutes away. And I went there one time. I was like, actually – I said, this place is really nice. <laughs> it's bigger than I thought. It reminds me of the little ones in St. Lawrence County, right? But it's bigger, uh, physically bigger. They got great plants, and the staff is really nice. And it's five minutes from the house, right? And and now, now they are a little more expensive than Lowe's or Home Depot, but I'm happy to shop there and keep that place in business because even though they're a little more expensive, the service is great. Uh, you know, we bought a we bought a grill there and some other stuff, and, they, and so they're really, really good. And, and, and there's nothing wrong with that, right? We all have to make that. I'm, I'm thrilled to have a, a, In my situation, I live on the south side of Newcastle, and about four years ago, Gilman's opened up a do-it best center in yeah. Newcastle. It's the only lumber yard we have in town, and it keeps you having to drive 30 miles yeah. to the next town to go get lumber or, uh, or countertops or paint, yeah, or yeah. high-quality paint. Uh, so it, it's great to have. The, the thing that I think a lot of us lose sight of is that if there's a product that you're going to buy at a local store and it's going to cost you 
two times what it would cost to buy it at on online it means that you're not going to be able to buy another product yeah, locally that yeah, you would have. Exactly. So if I'm looking at yard signs for my campaign, all right, I'm, I'm running for county council. Uh, Jeremiah Morrill at uh, for the Henry County Council. You uh, are it, yeah, really? Yeah, really absolutely. I didn't know. Uh, great, great <laughs> opportunity to uh, vote for freedom. Anyway, the uh, <laughs> shameless plugs. Uh, you're welcome. The uh, I, I'm looking at yard yeah, signs. Yeah. So if I'm if I'm going to look at a local vendor and they're going to charge me five hundred dollars for yard signs, or I can go online and buy them for two hundred. It means that I can spend three hundred dollars more that I've raised on something else, and I may be able yep. to select a local vendor, and then they get, get that work still gets done, right. and the campaign benefits, and even more product was sold. Right, and I want to note, and this is I think a point that's in the fee article that Dakota pulled up. This is the exact same logic with international trade, right? That when we buy, if I buy Chinese made TV cheaper, I've got money left over in my pocket to buy. Perhaps U.S. made stuff that I otherwise wouldn't have been able to buy if I bought this. So, so again, right? I mean, it's, it's which the, raises our standard of living. Right. Yeah. Everybody's standard of living right. got better because now I have two of something. Right. Right. And and let's note by so the you're way, richer. That's right. It. You're richer. And and the Chinese got better off too, right? I mean, you know, the fact that we, I bought the, the 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 Chinese made TV means there's a bunch of Chinese workers who are doing better than they were too, and arguably they are in the. They need it more than we do, but you know that's uh, right. Like, uh, like the eye pencil. Yeah, you, yeah. you know, like, uh, yeah. In the fee article, uh, you did write about that, and uh, I forgot we were going to talk about eye T-shirt with Chris. <laughs> yeah, we were going to. Yeah, we, that's he was right. Gonna ah. go totally locally sourced, and we're going to yeah. make him grow his own cotton. Yeah, and and dye his own wool. Or, you know, get yeah. his own dyes, and 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 pr- yep. do everything local. He's going to do everything locally. You brought up uh, Ben Powell's book called uh, Out of Poverty. Yep. Sweatshops in the global economy. Um, yeah, I, 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 I've read a little bit. Of, you've written about this yeah. before. By the way, Ben will be one of our speakers in the spring. Uh, really, at Ball State. So that's just a little plug for that. Are, are you still putting all of your lectures online? Uh, all of my my class lectures. Yeah, yeah, the same ones. I'm, re, I'm I'm teaching online again this semester. Uh, mostly because I'm I still don't have an immune system, or at least I don't I don't have a complete immune system. <laughs> didn't make us wear the SARS masks. So no, I no, <laughs> no. I didn't even check if you guys were healthy. But but uh, it, it, this is interesting. I'll just if you get a stem cell transplant, if anyone you ever happened to get a stem cell transplant, one of the things to know is that it wipes out your immune system, and and so you get your white blood cells and all that back. But you have to go through your childhood immunizations again. Really? You got nothing. I got nothing, right? I lose all. It's like it is like wiping, like reformatting a hard drive. You lose everything. So you got your MMR, your polio, I got, I, well, not yet, right? That's the thing. Not till six months. So December, I get all that stuff. Uh, and so, and you lose all your cold immunities too, right? You're completely. So everything you've had, you've, you're subject gone. to yeah. again. Yeah, I'm subject to again, exactly. Uh, which is the whole, I mean, that's the treatment, right? You want to, it's my immune system is the problem. So doing this. We've rebooted it. Yes, exactly. That's, in fact, my Facebook profile when I was having it done was all all jokes related, sort of computer images of rebooting or Yeah, wiping did you try dressing. turning it on? Yeah, turning right, it yeah. On, turning it back on again? No, because that's when they get the paddles out. We, 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 didn't, want, we didn't want that. Uh, but, but anyway, yeah, so, so, I'm, so I'm teaching online again because – it's silly to expose myself the students to students are dirty. Right. They're germy disgusting <laughs> well, eighteen and, and twenty two. Right? Back to the point about yeah, the about the uh, immune <laughs> system really quick. Yeah. I saw your your post this week about uh the uh, the vaccines. And yeah. I, I I thought about it before, kind yeah. of. Yeah, that, but not that, really. There's in adults that context. running around out there without immune systems that you need oh, to Oh, that's together. true. You yeah. could this is your yeah. chance to anti vax. You can just <laughs> yeah. not take them. Right. Or, or scream at everyone else who isn't. But yeah, so so. God, I hope we, Steve we, doesn't get autism. <laughs> so so well, uh, that ended Dakota's career. Yeah, it did. Uh, where were we? Oh yes, we were. So I'm teaching online again. So all those videos that were are still they're still on YouTube. All the videos that were were up are still there. Yeah. So cool. Um, so you can all find right. those. That's for my for my intro class. Yeah. Yeah, I'm glad to see him again. I, Chase, my, do you feel like you just got a first grade econ uh, d- explanation? Do you, I mean, any, do you have any questions from the from the third row? He's looking at porn over there. Yeah, so. yeah. I'll be honest, guys. <laughs> <laughs> he's I, looking at porn. I'm telling you, I am trying to get my fantasy league together. <laughs> 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 All right. Well, it's it's you know it's middle aged guy porn. Right? It is. <laughs> it is really hard to get twelve guys to agree on one night for for a draft. I haven't even tried. I haven't even tried yet. I haven't reset our league, uh, my my league that I'm trying to get Chase into. I've never done. I, I did that whole thing on fantasy football, right for mm-hmm. IHS. But I've never played. I've never actually been in the league, and and I think one of the reasons I don't want to do it is it will make me over invested in the NFL. 
<laughs> right? That I'm going to care too much about what happens every week. Yeah, remember, you don't want to remember support... I grew up in Detroit. I'm a Lions fan, so I have problems here to begin with. You're going to love Golden yeah. Tate in the third round. Right, right, right. <laughs> and so, you know, it's bad enough I have to turn on and watch the Lions, you know, uh, well, and you don't want to you don't want to overly support those god dang flag kneeling. Well, there's yeah, <laughs> yeah right. All those commie NFL players. <laughs> I, I'm waiting for the fee article that says "Love my country or get out." Yeah, no, nope. <laughs> not happening. Not gonna happen. Not gonna. What happen. do you think of this? Uh, what do you think of this last point uh, that came from that study that said that uh, local business owners donate to the community at twice the rate of. Uh, corporations. I, I honestly don't, I don't know whether what they were measuring and whether that's true. So I, I mean, I, uh, it, it's certainly possible. Neither do I. They didn't cite so, anything. So, but the one thing I would say is, look, you can donate to the community, right? You can donate your time and resource and those. But the other thing you can do for the community is to create jobs and offer low prices and, and so on, right? It's it's not. This is part of that moral high ground, right? To sort of claim that the charitable stuff is what we count. As working for the community, and we don't count the the, the sort of economic benefits that come from sort of the normal profit seeking activity of firms. That's the problem, and I think again this goes to a sort of deeper philosophical issue where we tend to uh, overly credit people's intentions. Right? Oh well, clearly if you're donating and you're being charitable, right? It, we can understand that you are trying to intentionally do this good thing. Whereas the you know, Walmart is trying to maximize return to its shareholders or whatever, it's seeking profits, the fact that that unintentionally does all these good things, we don't count as much morally. And I think it's an interesting question whether yeah. that's that's what we should do, right? I mean, ah. what is it, what, do, do the intentions matter? That was the, uh, that was the perfect answer. That's exactly what I was hoping you would say. Well, there you go. <laughs> that's why you guys are paying me the big bucks to be on the show, my, <laughs> yeah, my, free, right. my free water. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Wait, I'm, I'm sorry, studio. Not... You're gonna. It, it has. We just have. We have a money tree revenue <laughs> installed. Yeah. I'm sorry. Can I get one of those Perrier. helmets with two beer things on it? I only had one Perrier left in the refrigerator, so and that one's for me tomorrow. Okay. Well, all right. We're starting to work on decorations. If people are listening and watching and want to start uh, decorating the new studio, I had Donya Lester is leaving. Uh, she's retiring as the. Uh, uh, from Purdue University in the Ag College, she's uh, she's been their alumni uh, group leader uh, for for twenty years. So she's got a whole office full of stuff. So she's she's getting us. She's going to be a guest next month. Uh, it'll be for her first post collegiate. She can speak freely and tell us what she really thinks. Um, but <laughs> unlike Steve, who just does it anyway. Yeah. Uh, but she, I got she's, tenure. <laughs> she's fine. Uh, she uh, she's bringing us a uh, Bobby Knight poster uh, where he was wearing the Purdue colors. It's so like life size. Oh, yeah, wow. it's, it's going to be. It's you need like, a little chirp. Need some chirp chirp swag. Hey, yeah. help yeah. hook us up, man. Let me see what I can. Well, do. she's you got she's, any old Papa John stuff you want to no. put on the wall? He didn't tell you she's leaving. She decided to leave Purdue because of Andy Gross. <laughs> yeah. that's, well, between that's Gross it. and Schnatter, right? I mean, yeah, you know, you, yeah. It's just well, too much. Time to get out. Just hashtag too Gross is Gross. That mm-hmm. was the hashtag trending on Twitter. Yep. Have you uh, ever generated a hashtag? Have everybody protested you enough to create a hashtag? In no, anger? no, but but I will. I, when I was at St. Lawrence uh, in the late '90s, when the, when the sort of anti WTO and anti free trade stuff in Seattle and all that was happening, there was a faculty member in the sociology department who had sort of whipped his students into an anti free trade frenzy. And, and I had just moved from the econ department over to my associate dean job, and the secretary from econ calls me one morning. She says, you need to come over here right now. And I go over there, and these guys had uh, – these students had uh, chained the doors to the econ building. <laughs> uh, they had put crosses out on the lawn for all the people that free trade had killed. And t- drew like chalk bo- you know, chalk coffins on the, on the ground, and they were passing literature out. And, and, wow. uh, and I walked – and I walk by one. One says, this "One says to me, like, do you know what gets taught in these econ classes? Not knowing, right?" And, I, and I'm like, "Yes, I do. Do you? It's not clear, right? Because uh, and and the the, uh, the Watertown TV station was out, so it was a W T T Y W W W N N Y. You said all of the people that free trade has killed. Yeah, because capitalism. We know capitalism kills people, right? It's evil. Yeah. yeah. So never so mind. Was, the, never yeah. mind the 110 million right. people that have died from uh, well, right. the Communism centrally and controlled that, yeah. economy. Yeah. yeah, we don't count them. Have they? Have, has anybody talked to you uh, or asked you about uh, at this uh, trade war we've started and agriculture and what it's doing to our soybean farmers? We had some. We had some some bean guys in here a couple months ago. I, I no one's. I haven't done any media, local media, or anything on it. Um, I've seen some clips of Indiana farmers 
being pretty upset, right? Uh, and getting, that's getting, the you know getting, as really we killed as, by it. As we as we've raised these tariffs on steel and aluminum, the you know that's the right hook we've sent, and the retaliation yeah. has been on right. on soybeans, right. which has caused. Uh, Pricing to drop, so right. these guys, it, right. soybeans are a, an annual thing, yeah. right? So you've you sold your crop last year, and now you've got pricing locked in this year. So they're they just know something's coming, but right. you haven't sold anything yet. Yeah. yeah, no, and this is you know the 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 image of the trade war, right? Is 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 the is the gun that backfires in your own face, right? That you think you're shooting someone else, but you're ultimately shooting, you know, shooting yourself. Yeah, it's um, the the old Elmer Fudd right, shotgun, that's right, right, that's backwards. right, that's yeah. right, exactly, exactly, uh, and and. Uh, you know, did you see this John Oliver clip that's been going around too from a couple nights ago? I guess it was where he did this whole, uh, yeah, it was the HBO thing on. He did one on HSAs that I just watched. Well, this was this one. On, this one on, on this on trade. It was great. It wasn't. I mean, it, was, it wasn't misinformed. He no, was actually no. Correct. In fact, he was correct. It's been a minute since he's been right on one. So. Yeah, no, he was correct. Probably since uh, very correct. I mean, right. to the point where several of my colleagues said, said even with the adult language, they were going to use it in class. Right? So, really? Yeah, it's about twenty minute clip actually. Yeah. So, Normally his stuff's hmm. on YouTube. We'll have to look for that. Yeah, it's out there. Um, it's, it's that's where I saw it. Yeah, so look for it. It was it's very good. His work um, on civil asset, his video on civil asset forfeiture was fantastic. Yeah, yeah, he no, was good on that one. Right, and it's you know this is something right really interesting. If two things are interesting about this, one, people on the left all of a sudden becoming free traders. <laughs> Because <laughs> it's because Trump. So, yeah. so right? as libertarians, yep. we, we you know we yeah. we never have real huge power. So we we and we get to be the people that beat the same drum over and over and over again. Right. And then the the big D's and the big R's that when they're in power, they're here. And then they I'm holding my hands out left yep. and right. And then we're going to swap. Yep. They trade as, right. soon, as soon as you lose majority, you swap. So. You know, so de- right. now Democrats are against bombing people, but they're for free trade. Right, and I'm 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 glad to have them with me on the free trade side. I I you know I'm not sure how long they're going to stay there, right? So so that's really interesting. And the other the other interesting thing here is this is the kind of thing libertarians need to be better at, right? Having someone like this who can be funny uh, and and incisive and put something like this together and that's and make Chase. It work. You just yeah. described Chase, well, really. Yeah, that's that's yes. Yeah. He's still trying to find a draft night over. <laughs> he's he's I think not we've even settled on a Wednesday. Next, he, he's next not Wednesday. even a, a member of the local libertarian, libertarian party. Um, they ask for a fee, man. <laughs> I like free stuff. There's no such it's thing as twenty five dollars a, a year, yes. man. Okay, so we were talking we were talking a minute ago about civil asset mm-hmm. forfeiture, um, uh, and in the group chat, whenever we were planning this, is uh, the, from the Cato Institute, Indiana. Came oh, yes. in uh, number three of overall personal freedom. freedom in the United States or the fifty states. Yeah, yeah. Do you know how they uh, map that out? It's a it, it's a really they've got a lot of factors right that put into very this thing. precise. Yeah. I mean, the weights are down to like point zero one percent of the total, right? And it's got a lot of stuff in it. And personal freedom is like thirty four percent or something of, of that. So they're, it's they're not, looking at regulations, yeah. personal freedom, economic freedom, right. lawsuits, yeah. land policies, right. marriage, education, it's, fiscal, right. uh, marijuana policy. I mean everything, right? And so yeah. Yeah. I was I mean, crimes, to, health insurance. All I'll kinds be honest, of stuff. I, I was surprised to see Indiana number three. I was. I was, I was not surprised to see New York number fifty. <laughs> uh, not at all. I was surprised to see number three because. Econ- I mean, economic in the in the recent uh, uh, economic freedom of the world index when I looked at the states, Indiana I think was number nine, uh, and I wrote a my colleague Todd Nesbitt and I did an op ed about that in a monthly paper. Um, so on economic freedom, number nine, but but you don't think of Indiana as a place that's high in personal freedom. No. Uh, well, no. we got those Sunday sales now. Well, yeah, right. Well, but 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 that counted for something, right? Some yeah. of the the, the re- you know relaxation right. of alcohol Be- because we're up we're up by one rank right. since the last time right. they did and, it. And so they were, but they looked at a broad range of things. If you're going to count gun laws, Indiana's gun laws are pretty good, right? Um, so some you know the stuff that they included in there actually, I was like, all right, that that makes sense. Um, we have more casinos than we've ever had. Yes, that was another one they had in, in there yeah. too. And now Caesar's Palace, by the way, has bought out. They bought uh, uh, the Hoosier and yeah, and yeah, uh, we and, and Grand, <laughs> we yeah. have. We convinced ourselves that we are the most. We we take a long time to get there. We're, we're all like Churchill said about the Americans. That, you know, they eventually we get to yeah. the right thing. Uh, we convinced ourselves that it's okay to have race tracks, horse racing, and then we said it's okay if the horse racing tracks have video poker. Right. And but God forbid we have any table dealers. We can't have that yet. 
and then we said we can have we can have a casino as long as it floats and they have the casino has to float down the river and then we said ah well as long as it's floating we can go ahead and just keep it to the dock right this and then year. and then we had a lawn, landlocked area that said in Orange County that said oh we really want a casino so they built a moat so they put a boat in a moat and we could have a casino in Orange County at West Baden yeah and then uh, and then finally we said to hell with it we can just go ahead and build casinos so, wherever we want to so I'm a big blackjack player right and so when I you know Hoosiers what 25 minutes up the road from me at Fishers, right? So one time my wife was out of town. I said, all right, I'm going to go up and play. And I have to say it was one of the most disappointing casino experiences <laughs> of my life, uh, mostly because it's at the Blackjack's all video. There's a person, but you're playing these video machines, right? Yep. Mm-hmm. And like, so back to our earlier topic. Look, p- part of why I go to play Blackjack is I like hanging at a table with people who are enjoying themselves. That's the community aspect, right? right. I don't yeah. care if that, you know, if I lose a little money, I lose a little money. I'm having fun. Uh and I don't want to get so – oh, it was just so depressing, right? Like losing money felt awful because you're not even having the enjoyment, right, out of ha- you know the, the camaraderie that comes with actually having a dealer. Yeah, you know, that's the people who – Dakota's experience in the casino last year for our state convention <laughs> or libertarian convention. Well, that was with actual people. It, it just became awkward for me because I, I you know, uh, is – was getting ready to get married in a single income household, so I wasn't trying to spend yeah. a lot of money. Yep. And I was playing next to a man who was betting with hundred dollar chips. Yep. <laughs> yep. And I was like, uh I feel super uncomfortable because now I feel bad that I've lost fifty dollars yeah. and he's betting hundreds. But yeah, I think that uh going back to the Indiana being number three, yeah. I think that uh right to work yep, that's another, helped us. Yeah, that's another big um, one too. Yep. Yeah, and that's... again, and, the, and, and as, as they point out in, in that study, right, from a regulatory perspective, we are pretty good, right? There's a couple of things they point to where we could be better, but, but – uh, and, and another one that issue they raised, we have not – the Indiana has not raised the minimum wage, the state minimum wage, right, above the federal level. So, right. so that's another – that's a biggie, right? So uh, – and great uh, 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 educational options like, you know, so K-12 uh, vouchers and credits and all that kind yeah, of stuff. Yeah, yeah. So, so these, many these things count, right? So many people don't understand how, how those things have an effect on personal freedom. Like that, because of the fight for 15 that's yeah, going on right yeah. now, we have the whole – every single person in the United States now is against Betsy DeVoe and she, her voucher program. So now all of that's screwed up for us. Yeah. And no one looks past the now this videos on Facebook, right? So that's that's really put the screws yeah. to our whole uh, political type discussions. Yeah. But one question that uh, came in from a listener, Stephen, um, he he was asking. Uh, actually, I'll, I'll just read you his yeah. question. He says, "Please ask the economists about how trails." Sidewalks and bikeability affect a community. First of all, Stephen, he has a name. It's Steve. You should know that. <laughs> <laughs> Easy to remember. Yeah. Um, that's an interesting question. So I, I just in where we live in Fishers, just finished this bike trail that runs essentially from Connor Prairie right down 131st, then down Lantern Road, and then kind of goes right into the municipal complex where like the library and all that stuff is. Uh, and already, now that it's done, there's people out there biking and walking. And I think it, I think those are good amenities to have, right? And I think one of the things libertarians perhaps don't talk enough about, e- even if you're inclined to be an anarchist libertarian, it seems to me anything that reduces the size of government down to the most local level possible is a good thing. Yep. So it's it's much, you know, it's harder, I think, for libertarians to complain as much about local government stuff. Often it's done better. Not always. Often it's done better. But you have the ability to move, right? I mean, you, if you don't, if I'm a pissed at Fishers, right, I can move, you know, not to Carmel. Down there, but, <laughs> you can you go know, to Westfield. Where I'm, Westfield or yeah. Noblesville. All right, yes. That's okay. There Never Carmel. So, <laughs> just, so quick, just a quick story on this because I'm talking about this. Fishers has a great farmer's market, by the way, if you've never been on Saturday morning. It's a great farmer's market. Carmel has one too. The difference is that Carmel's Farmer's Market actually has a rule that says you may not bring dogs to the farmer's yep, market. Yep, I've been to Carmel's what? Farmer, Farmer's what? Market. What? Right. That's why I go is to go hang out with the dogs. I mean the food's nice <laughs> and everything, but <laughs> go hang out with the dogs. And it's just such a nice difference between Carmel and Fish Lake. Hey, uh, insider, any... insider information, Jesse dogs. Riddle actually runs the Carmel Farmer's Market apparently. With his hatred for dogs and children. Yeah. Well, yeah. okay, there you go. Then. So, but but that kind of stuff, right? I think to the, to to our what's his name again? Oh yeah, Stephen. Steve. Yeah, Stephen. Steven, yes. Uh, I think his, it's a good question, right? And those things, I think they matter. Uh, and those are ways that lo- if if you want to, if local communities want to attract people, right? 
what do you need? You need good schools. You need safety, right? And you need those sort of basic amenities, right? To, to the to the streets have huge potholes? No, good. Are the schools good? Yeah. You know, can you can you get down to the library? Yeah. That's all you need. You don't need these big sort of you know development plans and all this kind of stuff. People will come if you have the basics. Here in our community, yeah. we've seen some some very nice improvements happening. Uh, one of our uh, we've got like five elementary schools in in, in the Newcastle School Corporation, mm-hmm. uh, and they've been putting in sidewalks in front of mm-hmm. the Riley Elementary School, the one in my neighborhood, and uh, our ma- literally Main Street and uh, the North South Street, and then Riley Road is one of our main East West mm-hmm. arteries through town. Uh, they're finally installing sidewalks there, and it's a great thing. Those are being installed now. I wish they went another 500 feet south to my neighborhood, but yeah. uh, eventually they'll get there. Uh, but it's a, it's a big deal, and it, it makes it does make a community more walkable. Right. So they've they've done a lot of work to try to make bike paths happen yeah. and walking. Yeah. That's it helps with the uh, with accessibility and and, and when you think, I mean, you know, again, even as libertarians from a sort of tax perspective, whatever, these are not expensive things in the big picture. Better that than you're than you're th- throwing you know subsidy money at all kinds of corporations who are going to not do anything productive. Right. Those aren't going to bring those aren't going to bring permanent jobs. Those aren't going to bring residents in. Right. I mean, you know, and and even with the schools point, it's not necessarily that you have to think in terms of public schools. If you have a locality that and if, and if the state allows for some flexibility for charter schools and so on. Right. Let the localities open it up as much as possible. It's about school quality. It's not about necessarily whether it's public. So the city here yeah, has uh, Aaron Dick in front of the show has been talking about trash. This has been like his issue. He they had a trash ordinance. There was this thing about mm-hmm. are we going to pick up large trash? When's it get done? That the he he and the mayor have been having this discussion, and and now they're saying okay, we've got a large trash ordinance in place. But now every time the city because the city runs its own trash company basically, yeah. they have their trucks and they run their schedule. So if you live in the city, you pay twelve dollars a month, and the city picks up your trash and takes care of it. So you're on their schedule. And I and they and now they have a program. Well, we're not charging enough money, so and we can't replace trash bins. And if the, the lid gets messed up, they've got this list, and you're stuck on this list for years, and you can't get new things. And you're supposed shocking to shocking that supposed the to, city is. Yeah, right, yeah. you're <laughs> supposed to be able to get a free tr- second tr- toter, but they've run I'm, out of toters. I'm, imagine, so imagine what nationalized healthcare would look like. So. So Aaron is trying to solve this problem as as local governments do. He's 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 having conversations and saying, "Hey, if we take the fee from twelve dollars to fifteen dollars, we have a dedicated fee to replace these things. Um, what you know will that solve the problem?" And I'm I'm talking to Aaron and, and I've been talking to him all week about it. I said, "You know, I have private trash service. So I, where I live, I live five doors down from city limits. So I don't pay the city for my trash. I they they don't offer it where I live. I pay." Whatever I pay, nineteen dollars a month or something. It goes to the same landfill, and it goes to the same <laughs> landfill. I, I, it's directly with the landfill contractor, and I could choose from three different yep. groups to do it. Yep. And I say, you know, if I if something happens to my trash trash bin lid because their their truck literally dropped the trash can today, the lid popped off. It's the second time it's happened. I called them. They send somebody out, and then a week within a week. My trash can lid is replaced and my bin works yep. again. And meanwhile, if I, live in the city, I have been waiting year. for a year and a half. I've been waiting eighteen months. Since what? I submitted a request for two new trash toters. So uh, Hamilton County has multiple trash providers, right? So when we moved to Fishers, I contracted with one, not Republic, who is evil, uh, <laughs> but a different one. And then found out like a couple weeks later, and I did not know this, we have a homeowner's association, that the HOA has a contract for the whole – Association. Oh, so you've with, got to go with, them. with with one with one company, but not the one I went with, right? But here's the interesting part. So I so I called the one I went with. And I charged the whole year ahead of time because it was cheaper, right? And I called them up and explained what happened. Refund like that, not even a question, right? We'll, ref- we'll refund it. Let us know if you don't get it. We're, you know, uh, blah, blah. so again, the competition there. Even though the HOA mandates that we go with the one, and then there and. But the HOA could change that contract, right? So it's still, I mean, it's it's not that 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 if they you know they mess up, they're still. Exit options, uh, but the comp- competition, man, it's, it's good. <laughs> the yeah, uh, yeah so I'm, I'm challenging the city, saying, why do you even have to offer trash service? Yeah, what what if you sold the trucks and you said, hey, you guys, you we'll say we have a rule, everybody has to have trash service. But we have we, we made yeah. it. You have to have health care, right? Yeah. Pick any trash service you want. Yeah. I don't care which one you have, but you, ha- you pick any one of the three, yeah. and then you get you get better service. Yeah, uh, better for- prices, even mm-hmm. better service. <laughs> Uh, it's a TNH sweeper. It's big that, and big, big garbage. Yeah. <laughs> this has been trash talk with Dakota, Steve, <laughs> Dakota, and Chase and Jer. 
Uh, Kirsten says that uh, she asked for a trash toter in 2010, and she's still waiting. Right, yeah. She's buying a new yeah. house instead. So just, it's just easier just to buy imagine, a new house. Just imagine what nationalized health care would look like, right? That's why That's, I'm moving, yeah. is it's easier to buy a new house. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the reality is government has really good intentions. They want to make it work. But they can't react well. They can't just change their prices if they no, want and to. It's, and you have a it's it's bureaucracy. So yeah, even if the best of intentions, it doesn't right. work well. It's because it problems. is designed to move slowly. It's supposed to move slowly, which is a good thing. Right. It's not a bad thing that government moves slowly because uh, we obviously We'd be in bigger trouble if it moves exactly. Quickly, yeah. <laughs> so it's it's not that it's Aaron Dickens' fault because he but it communicates. Is. It really is. Yeah. Aaron's fault. Right. No, but, yeah, but of it, course. It is. Right. But this is an important point, right? And especially in these debates we're seeing now about democratic socialism and all that, right? I just had a piece out today uh, on Cato's website, libertarianism.org, on this. But these problems are not because people are evil. They're not because – it's not that every democratic socialist is you know, Stalin behind the mask or something, right? But that these systems have structural failures in them. That even with the best of intentions can't do the things that that the pe- that people want them to do. Right, right, and and that's and those are problems that aren't problems that can be solved by getting better people or getting more ethical people or or whatever. Exactly. Well, we're at that point where it's it's going to be past Steve's bedtime. He, yeah, uh, no joke. <laughs> I got to drive an hour home, so he's yeah, got, he's got a cruise. Uh, so I, I guess we'll start final thoughts. Steve, you have anything to plug? You want uh, anybody uh, to read any articles? Uh, follow well, uh, you on I social will, media. I, I will plug that one again libertarianism.org i uh, just had this piece out on, on on democratic socialism it came out today so you can take a look at that that's a cato institute project sometime soon i think now maybe the very end of 2018 i have a big project with cato on austrian economics that has a series of video lectures and audio lectures and a book a sort of short ebook that will be out from them uh soon uh other things to plug uh the the now the Institute formerly known as, uh, we will be beginning our, our uh, lecture series on September 12th, Wednesday, September 12th, with a guy named Chris Supernaw, who's a philosophy professor, actually, at University of New Orleans, will be talking about... Uh, Is he related to Doug Supernaw, the country music artist? I do not know. Probably not. Probably not. Uh, Chris will be, will be talking about uh, incarceration, mass incarceration, and talking about some of the reasons why... why we have it in the United States and what, what we can do about it. So that should be that should be good. And, and as we have more speakers coming, we'll uh, we will get that word out. And folks can the best place to follow me is on Facebook. I'm right at 5000 friends, but you can always follow me. You can follow my public figure page as well. It doesn't get updated as often. Uh, and as I like as well, as you guys know, from my Facebook page, uh, what is it? It's a 5000 person economic seminar in a bar. With really good food, <laughs> uh, lots of good classic rock on. Uh, You're a huge Rush fan, I'm right? I'm a huge. I'm a huge yeah, Rush fan. Rush. Yeah. So we got and and uh, uh, and really really good beer. So um, you know, come on down and uh, and join the party. Uh, if you if you have not friended me on Facebook and you do, send me a message that says you heard me on Boss Hog. And I will try to move you to the front of the line. There you <laughs> go. There's a, there's a so, line. This is this is part of the perks for get for yeah, Patreon, right? Go. If you if you you know if you pay for support through Patreon, you get to top of the line for Horowitz's friend request. Every so, time I I listen to Rush, I think of Bubbles from Trailer Park Boys. <laughs> and you should. <laughs> and you should. Yeah. Uh, so, have you had any uh, any other issues with the uncoke my campus people? Uh, it's, it's it's been quiet on campus. Uh, it'll be interesting to see whether the Schnatter Palooza. Re- reinvigorates them. That's what but I was the, interested the, in. The group of kids, I think, who were who were most active in that a couple of years ago graduated. So it was fairly quiet last year. There was a little bit about this time of year last year. Then it got quiet, and it's been quiet. I mean, the you know the the national organization poked a little fun uh, at me us for for being stuck with the Schneider name in that sort of window where we were stuck with it. But now they can't do that anymore. So I, uh, you know, I don't know. Um, it's at Ball State. It's called the. Progressive, Progressive Student, Student Alliance, yeah, yeah, yeah. Is the, was the group, and they're ironically they meet in our building, by the way, too, in the business <laughs> building, which is kind of funny. Uh, but they've been very quiet, and they have their own thing going on and their own issues that they're interested in. So we haven't heard much from them. I'm sure that they will be rallying around uh, what's her name, Cortez, in New York, and the Democratic Socialist stuff and all that. Maybe though, though those, you know, maybe that's not radical enough for them. I'm not sure, uh, but it's been quiet, and I suspect it will stay quiet. And and one of the interesting things that you know, sort of wake of the Schneider stuff is that 
we're trying to uh, get a meeting with the Black Student Association and really sort of see what we can do to to find out where our missions overlap and see how we can. Yeah, work I had with a so I had a help. conversation. Love with, to hear about that. Yeah. yeah, I had a conversation with a member of the Progressive Student Alliance there, and uh, I I ended up. Oh, I asked him something about Bernie's Medicare for All and uh, just having a friendly conversation. And yeah. he's he told me Bernie Sanders is not left enough. enough. Yeah, no, so they are they're out there. That group is out there, and that's and, you know, thankfully it's probably why they don't get much done. Um, <laughs> but yeah, you know, too many meetings. Uh, but yeah, I'm, they've been quiet, which is good. I mean, you know, for uh, from our perspective, we we're doing really good work with students, and we want to be able to keep doing it. Awesome. Um, but if they want to, you know, I'm happy to talk with them. I offer to them for, I've offered to sit down, and have coffee with them. My treat, not even Coke money out of my own pocket. Uh, <laughs> no takers. <laughs> not even Coke money. There we go. Chase, what's, a, what's up in your world, man? Well, he's trying to decide whether to draft ru- luck or not. You're running for, uh, for something coming up pretty the, soon. The Henry County Council, yes. Well, I, I want the I want the voters to know a little bit more about you. Uh oh. <laughs> so this is, I, this is the, this is where the campaign ended right here. <laughs> I have some serious questions. All right, you've been married for a while now. What is your your favorite part about your wife? Favorite part about my wife? Mm-hmm. I don't think he means body part. I think he means something else. <laughs> what is um, your favorite part about you know, being married to your wife? I I really enjoy the partnership. I do. Like mm-hmm. it's been that's been the best part. Uh, is I'm not going it alone anymore, Chase. You're, you're, someday you'll get to find this out too or feel it. But it's like it's like you're not on the uh, you're not at the circus on the rope all by yourself. Mm-hmm. You've got a teammate, and that's yeah, been really cool. It's not a, it's not a one person trapeze yeah. act anymore. Somebody right? else my, is letting the dog out sometimes. Line, yeah. <laughs> it's amazing. Yeah, it's, it's I, really I, I cool. could have been that person. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It's legal in Indiana. Now. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Unless you teach at a Catholic school. <laughs> what's uh, What's your yeah. least favorite part about being married to your wife? Man, uh, okay. Here, here. Truth time, Chase. <laughs> Truth time. I used to have a king size bed all to myself, <laughs> and now, <laughs> now I have to start in the middle of the bed just to give a little, so that I can have a tiny bit at the end. Yep. That's, yeah, that's that's the the and man, it's toasty. So before it's, it's Audrey, very warm. before Audrey and I got married. It was me and Daisy, my German shepherd yep. that lived here, and we shared the bed. And Daisy would <laughs> Daisy would sleep in the bed like a human. So she would crawl <laughs> up and she would put her head on the pillow. Yeah, that's great. And um and now it's like if, if Audrey leaves for a weekend like with her mom and her sister going somewhere, Daisy knows. And she <laughs> she hops up in the she's bed back. like immediately. It's like it before I even get to bed, she's in the spa already. When when I was living in New York, we had a little nine pound Yorkie, and my wife, my ex wife, and my daughter had bought it when I was. They told me, but they bought it when I was out of town, right? So I come home <laughs> after three days or whatever. The dog's been in the house for a while, right? And I walk in the door, and the dog's like, rawr, 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 rawr. I'm like, no, <laughs> no. And then I go upstairs to bed. The dog's on the bed, right? And I go to get in bed. The dog's like, rawr, rawr, rawr. so no, no. I don't think you understand the relationship here. <laughs> this is. <laughs> You're not. This is not yours, and you don't get to bark me at nine pounds out of the uh, bed. Yeah. No, that's just not happening. That that leads me into my next question. If you had to choose between getting rid of all the dogs in the world or <laughs> bacon, which oh, one would you choose? Oh, that is such a great question, man. Oh. Oh, that is such a great man! Question. I like my bacon. Uh, I, I, yeah, but <laughs> all I, of the dogs, all, all of the dogs. Do- I mean, no, I this would is... sacrifice my dogs, right? I would. I would Ooh, no, I mean everybody. You would no, have no, to individually no kill every dog anymore. in the world. Yeah, no. That, yeah. We like like what? Well, yeah. Thanos just years. make them disappear. Right? No, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I'd keep the dogs and get rid of bacon. Yeah, I, I would, would too. I would. Yeah. I would too. But now I would be. I would be selfless enough to get rid of my dogs to save bacon for everybody else. I would do that. Is that Sorry. selfless? Sorry, Garth that and Riley. That sounds heartless. Mm. No, that's selfless. <laughs> but I would, I would have to, I would have to let bacon go to save yeah. all of the. That's dogs. A, that is an outstanding my, uh, question. I, my my uh, my adult daughter will appreciate that. I'm going to text you. her that question this evening because I, I I know what she's going to she'll she'll be pissed off. She'll, uh, but she will get rid of bacon. <laughs> it's my prediction. All right, um, for your fantasy draft, yes. Do you go with a running back first or a wide receiver? Oh wow! I, now you, you'll you've not played in my league yet. Mm-hmm. My Yahoo league, we get point per 
Yeah, Yahoo. Point, point, per, point per completion. He's 60. Whatever. I've played in the Yahoo League for 15 years. I've been exactly. playing in the, in the Yahoo League. <laughs> at, least it's, at least it's not an AOL league. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we, uh, we are like a point-scoring machine in that league. Uh, so I would I would take a quarterback. I typically try to take a quarterback first round. Really? Yeah, yeah. And then running That's backs aggressive. are important. Yeah, we go quarterback, then we go running back. Points and then points per we completion, up. right, yeah. versus touchdowns, right? Yeah, yeah it's sure. huge. And then we get yeah. if you get 400, 500-yard games, you get you get extra points there as well. Yeah. So a, a good quarterback is an 80, 90-point game guy, and three or 400 wow. points a week will win. So in the Yahoo League I'm in, you know, if you get yourself back in the day Peyton Manning or a Tom take, Brady or, take or an Eric, yeah, take Stafford, Stafford this year. Uh, yeah. Breeze, uh, one of those guys that are going to get you four or five touchdown game and 500 yards, 400 yards. Yeah. All day long in the first round. Okay. And then I come back and get in two or three good running backs because we're point per rush, point per completion, point per catch. And then we go uh, with the um, – we also look for special teams players. Uh, this is – got the full breakdown, Steve. Uh, but yeah. kick returns, punt returns, and, and kick return yards are right. big and, as well. And in, in ones that go by – that put more emphasis on scoring, presumably you want the run – that's when you want the running back. Yeah. See, yep. see what you did? See, there's more <laughs> – there's, there's less good running backs out there. There's way more wide receivers, so I usually go running back first. But I've never done a point per completion, so yeah. that changes the game completely. Oh, it's huge. Quarterbacks are very big. You and if you if your guy gets hurt, you've got to make the decision. There's only 32 teams. If there's 12 guys in a league and everybody's holding under two quarterbacks, or if there's 14 in the league, that's even worse. And then everybody's got two quarterbacks. If you lose a dude, you've got like three or four quarterbacks to choose from. You're taking the guy off the Browns or the Jets or the Redskins. Oh boy. And and then you got to yeah. hope he starts. All right, and so it's it's a high risk. One more question. Yep. What do you think the Colts' record will be this year? Uh, think or pray for. They look good against Seattle first game, terrible against Baltimore. Both. I I would absolutely Three ceiling. That, no, you have to, it has to be has to add up to sixteen, Dakota. Oh. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> absolute ceiling. Best case scenario, great season. It's an eleven and five team. Eleven and five, uh, everything goes great. Not a chance. I yeah, think that's never. Happened. I think we're probably headed towards eight and eight, and if things are bad, it's a six and ten team. But I think they're eight and eight, nine and seven. Okay. I think we're somewhere in there because I think Andrew Luck is that good. So you're saying they you win that many back, games, even if Andrew Luck gets hurt? If, if, if Luck gets hurt or goes out, they're a five or six win team with Brissett and the new offense. Okay. But I really think that starting with Andrew Luck, you're seven or eight, and it's it could if everything goes right, you're eleven win team. I think they can make the playoffs. I think they can be a five or six seed. That, okay. That's that's it. You guys are, are you taking bets division? on that, man? No, no, <laughs> no. We're not putting money on it. Uh, but I, they've got a they've got a really good nucleus. They got a lot of guys that are going to need a little bit of time. But they had five, four or five second round draft picks. Yeah, and you have still got T. Y. Hilton. You've got you got Andrew Luck who's coming back. You've got uh, the Frank Reich offense, that defense is going to get better with time. They're going to they're run the cover, too, and they've got speed. They're building speed. I think you're they're a year away be from better. being good. Yeah, we're, well, we, we thought that in 2011 or 2012. Yeah. And, hell, they won the division, and, you know, we beat Kansas City in the playoffs. So who knows? That's why it's fun. That's why we play the game. Gotcha. Anything else? That's all I got. All right. Man, dogs versus bacon. That, I'm still working on that <laughs> Yeah, one. that was a good one. My million-dollar question. It's question. great. It's great. Yeah. And you can fry them both at the State Fair. <laughs> <laughs> all right my final thoughts um of course i want to thank the uh, patreon people um sticking with us through thick and thin and as we get into the new studio you guys are going to be paying for it um i appreciate you very much you're welcome um, <laughs> you're not a patreon <laughs> <laughs> um i do want to say He's really staff. i do want to say really quick though that I I really firmly believe that not just the people in Henry County, but the people across the state really need to pay attention to who they are going to be voting for in the November election. There has been a lot going on in uh, the world of politics right now. Um, there's a, a lot being said, and I, I firmly, firmly believe that in Henry County, we have a great lineup for people who are going to be the best people possible to serve on the council to help get our budget situation back in order, just like Clay Morgan said that uh, we need, you know, Chad Malico uh, gave Jeremiah a great endorsement, and I think that that Chad endorsed me. Wow, that's I said Clay news. Morgan oh, mentioned oh, yes. Chad yes. and you. Yes, yeah. <laughs> he endorsed both Poor of Chad you guys. Is, he just got in trouble. No, he no. 
Clay endorsed both of you guys. Although, Chad, you can, if you want to endorse me. Yeah, there on. we go. But I, I think that it's really important, and the, the same goes with um, Mark Rutherford, who is running for Secretary of State. I firmly, I 100% with all my being, believe that Mark Rutherford is the most qualified candidate for Secretary of State uh, in he, the state he's of He's going to legally be allowed to finish his term if Who, he wins. Who's running yeah. against him? Uh, we have... Uh, well, of course, we have the Republican and Democrat. What's the uh, what's the Republican's name that's not going to be able to finish her term? Uh, it's uh, the, the the lady that replaced Charlie White. I, I can't remember her name. Big for the life big of fan me. of her. Are you? <laughs> yeah, you're a Republican, huh? She's my favorite. Hmm. I paid the interest. Uh, Jim Harper's you know the Democrat, and, Democrat because and, uh, I'm a winner. Jim, I know Jim Harper's the Democrat because I know I know that uh, he got an endorsement today that wasn't. Uh, in our favor, Connie Lawson is the uh, the current. Connie Lawson. She's a current Secretary yeah. of State, and she's, she's not she's right going at, to be able. She's right to... at eight years, and she'll be uh, she'll she'll blow right by it. Because, yeah, because she... the guy before her went up in jail. Uh, Charlie White, who's uh, also a, a host on the Indiana Talks Network, where we're, we're he's our cohort. He's uh, he's on Indiana Talks, and so are we. But uh, Charlie did a little prison time after uh, some trouble he got into in Hamilton County and got tossed out. Yeah, he was, Mark, uh, Mark Rutherford is absolutely the best choice that we have for Secretary of State because if you if you vote for the Republican, you are not voting for the person or the candidate. You are voting for the Republicans to be able to pick who the Secretary of State is next. And that is not right at all. And uh, so, yeah, I firmly believe that uh, at least uh, three of these three of these guys for uh, county level races or four, I guess, Tom Firkenhoff uh, for Congress. You have uh, Mark Rutherford for Secretary of State, Jesse Riddle for District Three County Council, and Jeremiah Morrill for uh, District One County Council. And as far as uh, countywide politics go, those are. I, I firmly believe that each and every one of those are the best qualified candidates for the job that are in the race currently. And Lucy Brenton will be on your ballot as well for the Senate side. Yep, uh, she will. And you'll see uh, you'll see Lucy come to town hopefully when we open up the uh, new LP headquarters. Uh, final thoughts for me, real quick. Uh, we're running long. Happy birthday tomorrow to the uh, lovely Sarah Potter Morrill. Uh, big birthday celebration tomorrow, so that's going to be some fun. Uh, thank you very much to Steve for joining us. This has been fun. My pleasure. Glad you're and here again. Anytime. All right. This is uh, this is very good. And uh, next week we're going to have uh, the final shows that we record in this studio. Uh, yep. It's going to be. There's going to be teary. I, I don't even know. <laughs> there might be, there might be you know, some crying. Yeah, special decorations. Yeah. Stuff, uh, I think we had to like you know knock down the walls or something in here as we well we we assume that the new studio we, will be ready. We, we could, have we could to get leave in our mark. trouble. Yeah, we definitely should graffiti the hell out of these walls. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, no. well, all these sound panels are up with staples, and the signs are up with nails. I'm pretty sure we left enough marks. I'm gonna in the pee room. on that wall, and it's gonna say <laughs> Chase was here. Chase was I, here. I even ripped up a quarter round trim to put down the soundproofing in the corners. So, uh, yeah, next week we got Chris Bowers coming on, and then we are going to do a special episode. Uh, that's going to air Labor Day week because the entire – we cannot do a show without Dakota and I. That's a blood pact we made a long time ago that every show has the two of us. When yep. one of us is out of town, we have to record one early, so you're going to get a canned show Labor Day week. Uh, and it's going to be Darren Jacobs, uh, <laughs> Jordan Bruno, the yep. guy that lived out of his van for episode 15, I think, uh, Danny Morrill, Dakota, and myself. And Darren has been growing ghost peppers all year long. And – I don't know how it's going to work, but a number of the co-hosts are going to try ghost peppers oh, on boy. that show. <laughs> Should I put so, some in my gin and tonic? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how it's going to go. Jared, it's going to be. It's going to be ugly. I've heard a rumor going around that since we're not using his room anymore, that we're tossing him out. We're, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Once once we yeah. can replace him, you can have the big chair. I heard that's so, what it is. It's it's Jared and Chase show. <laughs> very with knowledge, episode, starting very with knowledgeable 77. about all these subjects. Yes, for sure. You are, Chase. I right. appreciate it. <laughs> this has been fun, everybody. We will see you next week. Thanks, guys. Thank you for listening to the Boss Hog of Liberty, which is part of the We Are Libertarians network. I am Chris Spangle, and I am the founder of this network. And I invite you to listen to all of our shows, which you can find at wearelibertarians.com or by searching for these in your podcatcher. The flagship show is the We Are Libertarians podcast, where we apply libertarian principles to current events. The Brian Nichols Show is a conversation amongst Republicans, Democrats, Libertarians, Independents, as they talk about what is happening in the news. And we have many other podcasts like The Chris Spangle Show, Upward, The Cost, Raw Audio Politics, Miranda's World, and Tad Talk. 
which is quite a ride. So check all of these out. Go to WeAreLibertarians.com, and you can check out all of our great podcasts. Thanks for listening. Thank you for listening to the We Are Libertarians Network. Get our other shows at WeAreLibertarians.com.